Hi everybody. September 30th, 2018. It is National Preparedness Month. Think about some of the events that could cause us to have major disasters. There could be a solar flare like the Carrington event of 1859. In the world there are 15,000 nuclear warheads owned by various countries. If one of them countries something happens and they let one off and they deliberately light it off up in the atmosphere. It would produce what they call an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, that would be similar to that solar flare. And would scientists in the government have said, if you can believe them, that it would take out our grid system. Who knows, it could take out cars. There might be gridlock on the road. For some reason, you need to get back home. And you're going to walk. And you might be a couple days walk away from home. Well, you'd like to have a few luxuries all along the way. So let's talk about a couple things here. This is my personal bag that I keep with me. It just has a few things. It would also be great that if I decided, hey, I'm going to go backpacking for a couple days, this is ready to go as well. Same type of a thing. So this could be for either a get home, a SHTF scenario, a you know, all kinds of things. A volcano, super volcano. Yellowstone did go off in the past. They say that if it did, it would be relatively unexpected. And when it did, it would be very bad, quickly. Um, there again, a nuclear attack of some sort. Some Zombie apocalypse. Say, yeah, well, in theory, they there's been signs on government signs. I know they were packed, but said zombie apocalypse. Anyway... So let's run through a few things here. First off, you're going to want yourself a nice bag. Or before I get into that, knowledge. Knowledge is going to be your best friend no matter what. As a kid, I was in Boy Scouts for several years. Back in the 1970s and 80s, they actually taught you survival stuff. Not about uh, the other subjects they do today. However, nonetheless... Knowledge. Anybody that has previous military experience is going to have some knowledge about how to survive. These are luxuries that can help you do that. We need food, clothing, and shelter. You can go three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, three weeks without food and survive. But I would like to have some of those luxuries. If you're looking for knowledge, a couple books. The Boy Scout Handbook. A little bit of reading on that during a rainy day or as we get into the winter time, you can learn a lot about basic stuff. It will give you ideas on how to find things to start a fire, to boil some water. It will teach you about how to make you a little shelter if all of a sudden you have a bad winter storm on the way. You need to stop and get yourself into a little shelter. All kinds of ideas. This one I do carry in the bag a little SAS survival guide. All of these things can be picked up on Amazon or various other places. This here is just a wealth of information on first aid, shelter, how to procure food, all kinds of things. A quick little reference for if you forget something. Now, if you need glasses, I need glasses to read now. And I need wear contact lenses to see. A spare set of contact lenses pair of reading glasses. A good bag. A good bag that we're going to keep this stuff in. We've got this here. Personally, this is fantastic. We eat it a couple times a month just because it tastes so good. Mountain House, it's backpacking food. So, or some people call it survival food uh, for disasters, things like that. It's, it's absolutely delicious. All you need is some boiling water. These, this bucket here, we have a nice variety of flavors we like. So I'm going to pick a couple of these out and put them in my bag. Lasagna. Pepper steak. Beef stew. You simply boil two cups of water, you dump it into this pouch, you just rip the top off of this, 
This stuff is good for 30 years. It has right on here a date. Best Buy, May of 2048. It's freeze dried. It's not a bunch of preservatives, not a bunch of chemicals. And the flavor is great. My uncle in the 1970s was a rep, and I still have a couple boxes of these kits from the 1970s of this mountain house as a preparedness type of a food. They've been doing it since then. They've been doing it around for a long time. Their flavors are great. Excuse me. A little bit of milk powder. Now, anybody that has any habits, if you have any types of prescription medications, the doctor wants me on blood pressure medicine. That is the only one that I should be taking because I'm borderline, but I'm trying to monitor it and adjust it through diet and exercise. But I go ahead and get it filled. So I have some blood pressure medicine. If you have a prescription for something that you take, when you get down, if you can spare yourself a two or three days worth, leave it in the original bottle. These people say, I'll oh, just take a couple days worth and stick it in a little container. Well, if you get pulled over by the police and they see some identified pill in the container, they're going to be like, what's this? You don't want to have to deal with any of that. If you have a prescription that you take, leave it in the original container. You can put it in a, a food saver sealer, stick it in there, just two or three days worth at the end of a prescription. Somewhere along the line, most of the time, you can get it filled a couple days ahead, and you should have a few days ahead anyway. Coffee. If you are used to having coffee on a daily basis, you're going to want some way. Got some instant coffee here. Boil some water. Dump a pack in, stir, and enjoy. Your body's used to caffeine on a daily basis. If you're used to two or three cups a day, you'll be able to have two or three cups a day. If you suddenly don't have caffeine for a couple days, you're going to have a major ca caffeine withdrawal headache. You can get these here. They're about maybe eight bucks for a bottle of caffeine pills. I wouldn't really, this would be a last ditch effort if I'm, if I'm stuck, I'm going to have to walk home. It's going to take me two days, only because I'm used to coffee, to avoid the problems of withdrawal. Yes, I started smoking cigarettes when I was 13. It's my last vice. I don't drink. If you drink alcohol, stick in a bottle of alcohol, because if you're used to it on a daily basis, your body's going to need that to maintain, to get yourself home. So whatever your habits are. So I have some nicotine gum and some packs of cigarettes. There again, anything that you might, your body might be dependent on, on a regular daily basis, you want to have a couple days worth with you. Now let's get into some of the other stuff. You might need to write some notes of some sort, whatever it is. You might get information along the way. Notepad and a pen. Uh, we've got a little fishing kit. We've got some hooks, got some fishing line, a couple bobbers. For fire starting, you're going to need to boil water to make your food and potentially for drinking. You might get lucky and be able to take a couple bottles with you, but over the course of a few days getting home, you're going to find a river or a stream or a pond with questionable water. You're going to need to start a fire. Now also there's the potential for these types of water purification tablets. You mix one and then you put the other one in which is supposed to take away the bad taste. Along with that, perhaps have some Gatorade. If it's hot in summertime, you can use this to mix up and uh, it'll take away the flavor of mud but if it's boiled, it's not going to cause you to get ill, but it'll just taste bad. To help with that, have some flavor. It'll also give you your, your electrolytes if it's in the hot summer. Perhaps you end up eating something bad along the way. These here are some 
oral rehydration, or what if you've got the flu anyway, or some member of your family's in the sick anyway, and you have to deal with this. Some first aid stuff, some oral electrolytes, and the likelihood of your digestive system being upset for a few days and eating cattail roots or some crawled ad tails or something, you may, you may need that. A little basic first aid kit. Now, what I recommend almost everybody that works has at their workplace some type of first aid cabinet. Don't just take it. Go talk to your supervisor. Talk to the owner. As a business owner myself, I would gladly, if somebody came to me and said, hey, I'm putting together a little, a little first aid kit. Can I, can I have, you know, make, have, you know, two or three packs of different things and make up a little? Sure, absolutely. I will gladly say it. Don't just do it. Get permission, and they will 90% of the time or more say sure. A little bit of uh, pain relief, some ibuprofen, some acetaminophen, a little burn gel. There's some antacid, and then there's also some antibiotic and some hydrocodone cream in case you get bug bites. There again, we don't know if this is going to be summer, spring, or fall, or the dead of winter. It could happen any time. Change of clothes. Now, when I say a change of clothes, socks, underwear, an extra T-shirt. Chances are the time of the season is going to be... Uh, you know, if it's winter, you're going to have a coat already anyway. A raincoat. Raincoat's going to be really important. Some type of poncho that can go over you and your bag. When you pack the bag, you're going to want to put moisture-sensitive things, shrink wrap them with a heat sealer, or put them into Ziploc bags to keep them dry. Because if all your stuff gets soaked, then you're going to have trouble. Got some tie wraps. If I need to stop off, we're in the middle of a blizzard, and I get down along into a little holler or, or a little valley along a creek, and it just the weather's just too bad. I have to stop, or I've injured my knee, and I need to stop for a couple days. I'm going to want to build some type of a shelter. Perhaps I can round up a couple, uh, you know, make a little lean-to. There again, that book is going to knowledge. If you do a little bit of research, you can learn how to make yourself a little quick temporary shelter. Well, having something like uh, some tie wraps or some paracord rope to help lash together the, board, the, 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 the logs. Going to have a little hatchet. And I've got this little knife here. This here with the back of the hatchet could be used to actually bang on the blade to help split you some kindling wood. Got a little chainsaw. Uh, it's in a bag. I don't want to take it out of the bag. But a little chainsaw uh, chain. It's got two leather handles on the end, and it's about oh, two foot long. You could take a. You got a bigger piece of wood that you need to cut in half. You would work that back and forth. When you're doing stuff like that, be careful. If you get cut, you're in trouble. There's no doctor. There's no 911 to call. A pair of work gloves some rubber gloves so you don't have to clean your hands too much. Perhaps, what if 9-11 in New York City? You got dust all over, some dust masks. A little emergency radio. This has shortwave, AM, FM, and it's got a hand crank. It also takes batteries. So you might be able to catch some news of some sort. If it's an EMP or something like that, this probably won't work. And your cell phone, in that event, forget about your cell phone because it's not going to work either. You're on your own. A little bit of cash, keep on hand, perhaps a couple hundred dollars if you can spare it. You may not be able to afford it, that's okay. Some wet wipes. Those could be real handy. Back to the fire. Waterproof matches as well as just your conventional Bic lighters. Now, if this gets wet in the rain, it won't strike until it gets dried off. So having a little pack of some waterproof matches, these are special storm-proof matches. Cost just a few bucks for a pack of them. And then these things will actually light underwater. Literally underwater. A 
pencil sharpener. What am I going to do with a pencil sharpener? Well, you take some sticks that you break off that are laying on the ground. They might be rained on, but they're not, uh, you know, they're not green. And you take that, that dead twig stick and you put it in a pencil sharpener and you make yourself some shavings, which is to start your fire. Give you just a little bit, and then you build up your other little twigs. There again, you go back to your to your book and have a little bit of knowledge about that type of stuff. As a third option for fire, because it would be so critical in the winter, you might need it to keep warm, and you're definitely going to need it to boil water, because that's the last thing you want to do is be getting sick with something from from bad water, and it's going to be critical for your food to have the water to go with it. You could eat this stuff crunchy and dry, but you're still going to need water. A magnesium fire starter and then a little striker here. A hat to keep you off the sun. A little bit of moleskin in case your feet get some blisters on them. A little bit of Caramex for if you get chapped skin, chapped lips if it's cold winter. A little saw. Now you say, well, why in the world is this still in a pack? I've already used these. I know that they're good. Um, some people say, well, you should get out, and you should. If you have no experience, go ahead. Go out and try some of these things if you really want to be practiced. There again, your chances of ever needing this is really small. But if you need it, you need it. So the saw uh, for cutting a couple of them small limbs and branches, there again, you're going to want to be real careful because there is no hospital to go get stitches. You're on your own. Have some gloves, pocket knife, titanium spoon and fork set for eating your food. You could eat it straight out of the bag with your hands, but if your hands are dirty and stuff, yeah, how are you going to wash it when you're done? Well, boil up some extra water and just rinse it and wipe it off. Let it boil to sterilize it, and then it's ready for the next time. If you're traveling at night, and you need to see each other or help see something, a couple of light sticks, a headlamp, and a small little flashlight. If it got to be out of control, there again, in a situation you're going to have a couple of days before people run out of the light, the people in the cities that run out of food in, in two days, you're going to have a couple days before the chaos ensues. They make these here, it's called a life straw. This life straw, in theory, you're supposed to be able to go up to a puddle, of a mud puddle, and literally drink the water straight through this that's going to filter out and help you get from sick. Personally, I would rather boil it, but if, you're, if you have to get out of the area fast, you don't want to draw attention with a the fire. There's an option. They make these little stoves. This is a gas fuel can. This screws on and you light it. This, there's going to be light, but there's going to be no smoke from a fire. So if you need to just simply boil water quick, fast, you're on the run. You can use this to boil water. Use this stainless steel cup. Boil your water, dump it in your bag. Then you, uh, you take off, you start walking, and you eat as you go. A little bit of salt and pepper, just in case you want it. Tissues. Uh, have tissues and some toilet paper. Take a partial roll of toilet paper when it gets down. Some tissues. You're definitely going to want to have some of that. If it's summertime, a mosquito net that goes over your head. If you need to stop and you need to sleep for a couple hours and you're sitting there in, a, in the woods next to a creek, a mosquito net over your face is going to keep the mosquitoes and bugs from going in your mouth while you're trying to sleep. A uh, multi-tool could come in handy for some various things. Can opener. You may come along with something along the way. 
Now, this here is a small emergency bivy. It's like a little sleeping bag. In the summertime, this would work acceptable. It's just a little bit of a protection. Then, this here, and you can double them up. If it's in the wintertime, it doesn't look like much, but it's got special um, insulate and things like that that will help keep you warm. Plastic bags can come in real handy. A little bit of insect repellent for the summer. There again, think about seasons in here. Now, you're going along and it is summertime. Well, you don't need the extra clothes. You don't need the extra, if you, uh, another thing. Hold it there. For if I get into a situation, my wife usually wears dress shoes. We're going to meet up. I'm going to have her bag with me, give it to her, and hand off, and she's got dress shoes. Well, we're going to be hiking 40 miles. A pair of old gym shoes that would be much more comfortable for walking in, ready to go. This would come straight out of the bag, be put on. Thermal underwear in the bag. Well, if it's summertime, you say, as soon as you start on this endeavor and you say it's summertime, I don't need the winter stuff, ditch it. You don't have to worry about carrying it. So, just some thoughts. Um, this is basically the layout. You need to come up and stand up and kind of scan over this stuff. Anybody can add or subtract. This here is some sterile eye wash. Let's say you get into a dusty situation like 9-11 and you got dust in your eyes. You need to wash it out a little bit and having a bottle of that. There again, you can at the, at, the be, at the onset of your journey home for protection, some pepper spray. If you're a concealed carry permit, if your state allows it, you can have uh, carry a gun and protection. And that may be something that you may need and, and opt to carry as well. I don't have that here. There again, it depends on your location and whatnot. Um, so those are just some basics. Here's another option on food. This here's SOS emergency food rations. These here are just some simple bars. You can pick this up on Amazon. They have a couple different flavors. They don't taste great. I've seen people that have actually done challenges and, t and ate this exclusively for a couple days. It gives you calories, and that's about it. But there again, if, you need, if you're going to be hiking and you need some energy and you don't want to invest, some of this can be expensive, yes. You just have to pick through and say, when you think about it in your own situation, what is critical, what is not critical. My hope would be that I could get home in about 12 hours really hiking it, and that on a good day. But from time to time, my knee bothers me. Well, if my knee bothers me, I might have to stop and take several breaks. Or if I'm with my daughter or wife and they need a break, we might we have to stop. I'm not going to abandon anybody. Another good thing to have, a couple options here. There again. Wrapped up as a scarf and a hat and some mittens. Wrapped up and ready to go. If it's summertime at the onset of your journey, ditch it. You don't need it. A little emergency whistle. Hey, we've stopped. We've, we're going to camp out. I need to walk down to the creek to get some water to boil. Well, something happens. A snake comes up and bites somebody. They can blow the whistle and get my attention. Hey, hey, we need you up here right away. Dental floss. Well, what in the world? You know, a couple days. Dental floss. This is a hundred yards. That's three hundred feet of um, of string. And this stuff's actually pretty strong. You could do a lot of stuff with this. I could do a whole video talking about hacks and things you can do with dental floss. So, just some thoughts, some considerations. Be safe, everybody.